This week on the show, we have Stephanie Panicillo, who plays the voice of the female protagonist, Claire Redfield, in the Resident Evil franchise. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that rejection is life's way of rerouting you to a better destination. The reality is when things don't work out as planned, we immediately take it as a sign that we should quit. But what if the failures and no's that you're experiencing today is simply a small detour, ultimately rerouting you to a better destination and creating space for better things to come into your life? When you look back, have you ever been in a situation where you really wanted something to happen, not work out, only to have life reroute you to something even better? Oftentimes, the failure you experience is exactly the detour that is needed to guide you to where you are meant to be. Making your mission today to remind yourself every time you experience failure or receive a no, that it's simply a detour leading you to something even better. Training your mind to see things in this way sets you up for always expecting and knowing that life is working out in your favor. As Zig Ziglar quotes, failure is a detour, not a dead end street. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. And I wanna talk about that. You know, the Resident Evil franchise is so big between the games and the movies, and it's really a fan favorite all over the world. So let's talk about your character, Clara Redfield. Yeah, you know, I always knew it was a big franchise because I also game, but I never realized to what extent. Yeah. And it is, it's it's crazy, honestly. Yeah. Uh, so honestly, so Claire Redfield is one of those characters that I feel incredibly blessed to play. I've been able to obviously, like, as you were saying, kind of bring her to life from the very beginning in Resident Evil 2 all the way through all the different um, projects that I've done since then. And she, when she starts out, she's truly just like anybody else. She's just like some 19 year old kid kind of like coming into the world and then everything is a disaster and what do you do she arrives at you know raccoon city looking for her brother which is pretty pretty crazy but what i love about her is she is someone that you can absolutely relate to not only is she somebody that's able to kick butt and you know rides a motorcycle and just happens to be starting the game with a you know a gun in her hand but <laughs> she's not somebody who has all that training so she's learning throughout the way and then she's also got a really big heart wardrobe provided by le chateau next up on the show we have stephanie panicello who plays the voice of claire redfield in the resident evil franchise stephanie thank you so much for being on the show today how are you doing thank you for having me um honestly it's a good day it's a nice hot summer day so <laughs> Yeah, I, I was telling you before, I'm loving the energy. It's uh, it's a great way to start this interview. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the Resident Evil franchise, the games, the movies. But before we get into your, your involvement in that, let's talk about, I know that you've always loved performing and you did some stand-up comedy. Tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. So my stand-up comedy days. Um, honestly, I did that when I first arrived to Los Angeles. And for me, it was important to learn how to create my own um, jokes, content, and then also deliver it in a way that um, was obviously gonna hopefully be funny, uh, but also that was gonna be kind of like received in a good way. And so, what that was for me was honestly me going out there and learning how to fail. Yeah, <laughs> so no. like, I, I know that sounds weird. And for some people, it's like, oh my gosh, that sounds incredibly daunting. But I wanted to learn what it was like to truly fail, to put yourself out there and to um, have bad nights and be okay with that. Because once I was able to do that, I was able to build a really nice... I don't want to say a tough skin, but it was almost like I was impenetrable. So even within my acting career, it didn't matter if I heard back, if I didn't hear back, whatever. And it was funny because some of my worst nights were my best nights for me. And then once I started getting good, I was like, um, I think it's time to go. <laughs> you know, like, wow. I think, you know. <laughs> 
I think that's a very interesting way of getting over your fears. <laughs> wow, you just jumped into it. You did the most uncomfortable thing possible just to get over that. That's actually very interesting. I think that's a great way to, you know, be um, fearless in anything you do. So I'm sure that taught you a lot, right? Oh, 100%. You got to be so vulnerable up there. Like, it, yes, you're 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 being comedic and stuff like that, but honestly, it's you're creating tension, right? And then you're learning how to relieve that tension through vulnerability that people can relate to, you know? So, which is really interesting, but it taught me a lot. I'm really glad I did it because it helped me honestly gain so many skills that I've been able to use throughout my career. I love it. And speaking about your career, let's talk about motion capture and video games. What does it take to be behind the scenes and how did you get into it? Yeah, so it's honestly, so it's a lot like being on camera in some respects, which I know sometimes I always get people are like, oh yeah, but do you do any like real acting? And I always laugh at that because I'm like, do you guys know what it is? Do you know what, you know, acting in video games and animation is? And so Obviously with motion capture, there's a lot of people that don't really understand what motion capture is. And so that's where you wear the suit and you have all of these balls that are actually t picking up the data within a volume, right? So the volume is the room that we're in. It's got a bunch of cameras everywhere. Picks up your data as if you were like a skeleton or something like that. So anytime that you move, that goes behind the character. So anytime you move, that also moves as well. So which is super interesting, um, but Honestly, it's really just like on camera if I'm being totally fair with you. The only yeah. thing is that there's a lot more technical things going on and it is truly such a blast. I know it's not for every actor because you do really truly have to be imaginative and experience those things around you because we only kind of have like almost guidelines or like the skeleton of what's really there. Uh, but we do have other actors in there with us, which I, I always find funny because people are like, are you talking to anyone? I'm like, yes, yes we are. Unless we're in a booth. If we're in the booth, then that's straight up in your imaginative world and you just really are um, just recreating that world within you in front of a mic, so. <laughs> yeah, it must be really interesting to see it on camera after you actually act it out, right? To see your character come to life. And I wanna talk about that. You know, the Resident Evil franchise is so big between the games and the movies, and it's really a fan favorite all over the world. So let's talk about your character, Clara Redfield. Yeah, you know, I, always knew it was a big franchise because I also game, but I never realized to what extent. Yeah. And it is, it's it's crazy, honestly. Yeah. Uh, so honestly, so Claire Redfield is one of those characters that I feel incredibly blessed to play. I've been able to obviously, like, as you were saying, kind of bring her to life from the very beginning in Resident Evil 2 all the way through all the different um, projects that I've done since then. and. She, when she starts out, she's truly just like anybody else. She's just like some 19 year old kid kind of like coming into the world and then everything is a disaster and what do you do? She arrives at, you know, Raccoon City looking for her brother, which is pretty, pretty crazy. But what I love about her is she is someone that you can absolutely relate to. Not only is she somebody that's able to kick butt and, you know, rides a motorcycle and just happens to be starting the game with a, you know, a gun in her hand, but she's not somebody who has all that training. So she's learning throughout the way. And then she's also got a really big heart. Um, and that's one of the things that I really love about her too. She is a bit stubborn, but she's always guided by wanting to have a connection with people, right? It's about having a human connection with people. She's a bit of a loner um, as she starts. And then it's about her desire to always connect and help out because she's always been kind of that that lone character growing up who's always looking up to her brother, so. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about the game for our viewers that are not familiar with Resident Evil. Tell us a little bit about the premise of the game. Yeah, so uh, so we're talking Resident Evil 2, which is our origin story for Claire Redfield and Leon Kennedy. Uh, so, and her storyline, you're able to, so you arrive on a motorcycle and literally just looking for your brother, you know, he's supposed to be in the town, he works for a company um, called Stars, which is like a militaristic type company. Uh, and 
she can't find him anywhere and she can't find anyone anywhere except for these dun 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 zombies <laughs> yeah. so, like, there's zombies there she runs into um you know different people throughout it that she starts building connections with and relationships with she loses people she meets people and it's just kind of like how she goes through this whole survival mode it's also just really beautiful to see the different storylines of how everyone adjusts to it and how they're kind of dealing with it as well and then uh and she truly becomes the hero you know in this in this game and it's it's quite beautiful there's another character that she meets it's a little girl that throughout that she's gonna also take care of and um and kind of you get to see that struggle of what that was like for her to take care of someone else now versus she's always been the one that people have kind of watched over because maybe she was the younger sister yeah. um but it's yeah she goes from a young kid to like being a complete and total kick butt hero so and resident evil 2 is really when fans got introduced to your version of claire redfield so how are you able to make the character your own yeah, so so this character, so okay, so the original Resident Evil 2 game came out back in the 90s. And so when it was my chance to show up, it was a little bit of, a little daunting to recreate a character that has been created and is super iconic. But I was very fortunate that the producers at Capcom, that the directors, everyone just really loved whatever I brought to her and we're very clear about, hey, whatever you do and whatever your choices are is what we want, you know? And so as I was creating her, I just really thought about the fact that she is, you know, as I said, a loner. So I really thought about that. And so that was always that like drive for her was a desire to connect with somebody else. And then, you know, I really thought about her physicality, which sounds funny, but, you know, when you're in a mocap suit, you got nothing there to really kind of work with. So I always, I always had them put like a, a high ponytail. So I felt like a little bounce in her step, you know what oh, I mean? Wow. Cause, she, Cause she's younger. And mm -hmm. so, uh, but as it kind of progressed, I just, I just really stuck to those, those qualities about her that I felt like other people could connect with because I think that's what makes her such a beautiful character and, and something that I wanted to make sure to keep was that human side of her. Cause it's easy to get that lost sometimes in video games or with heroes. You're just like, oh, they're perfect. You know, that's just what they are and they just kick butt, but no, they're not. And there are some things that they're getting through as well that keeps them, you know, very personable and, and very human-like for people to connect with, which I've been so blessed that the community really has and I get to hear some amazing stories from them, so. <laughs> very nice. And in addition to this role, I know that you also voice uh, Betty Ross in in Marvel's What If alongside uh, Mark Ruffalo. So tell us about that project. How's it been working there? <laughs> yeah, so that one was awesome. That was such a great project to be a part of. Uh, to be able to be part of the Marvel Universe is pretty wild. Uh, and then, you know, being able to do that with an all-star cast and everything, it was honestly such a great experience. The crazy part about it is, so it, the show is what if, um, so my character is in episode three and I don't want to give away too much, but it's what if all our heroes, maybe we're not our heroes anymore. <laughs> Put it that way. If you haven't seen it yet, I feel like it's a little too late. Am I allowed to do a little spoiler? I feel like I should be a lot of spoil here. <laughs> uh, but, um, but yeah, it was such a wonderful project to be a part of. It actually happened at the start of COVID, which is pretty crazy that we were able to create that. And we were able to, I was lucky enough to recreate or to be able to do that with one of my mentors uh, was a, is a sound engineer. And so uh, I was able to record, you know, he had a great booth. And so we kind of made it all happen. And the, the whole storyline and premises of what if is what if, everything was completely different. What if the world was completely different? And that's what we were experiencing. We were experiencing a completely different world. Yeah. Uh, and we made it happen. And it's so beautiful and it's such a great project. And I'm so blessed that I got to play as Betty Ross because she really is, you know, like an incredibly brainy, smart character. 
that again has a lot of love for the Hulk and not a lot of people really got to know that storyline um, because they always assumed it was about Black Widow's relationship with Hulk, but there's actually like an original love that's always been there with Betty Ross, so. Mm -hmm. I love that you're a strong woman and you're playing all of these strong female leads, so it must be, uh, it must be really nice. Oh, <laughs> <Aww>, thank you. <laughs> and, and let's talk about, you know, in addition to being a great actress, you also are passionate about empowerment, um, especially with women in gaming. So tell us about that mission. Yeah, you know, I, it's a big deal to me that um, people realize how empowered they really can be and how they can really create whatever it is that they want out of their lives. And so that's been a big mission to me, probably because I was, you know, I always loved acting since I was a little kid, but I definitely experienced bullying when I was a child. and. Um, there was a lot of things that I kind of like had to learn, but one of the things that connected me and got me very excited was actually Tomb Raider. So it was a game that I played when I was a kid. And, uh, and I really kind of looked up to Lara in a way, you know, because it was, you know, there was very few female characters at that time that you could play as or you could any of that you know and so and one of them was claire redfield by the way <laughs> the yeah. original claire redfield was <laughs> oh, funny um but that really resonated with me it was a big deal for me and it honestly i think influenced a lot of things like i rock climb now i also went to school for anthropology and took archaeology classes and sociology and learned about people and culture and all these things and a lot of that was influenced by that. And that's why it's important to me and from all the stories that I hear from you know fans and the communities and stuff, how impactful it is, these games, that I I enjoy supporting people in that way and, and letting them know like, hey, these are beautiful heroes and all these characters because there's elements of them that you really either see in yourself or that you want to see in yourself. And so, I try to do that for people. I try to be that space for people and hold that room for them to do that. And the same goes within, you know, females within the gaming, you know, community and actors. And I and I definitely, definitely make a big deal of that. I know in um, in Resident Evil, actually, uh, even with like the clothing choices, you know, that was, you know, one of my things was like, hey, I know that the original, she rides around in a motorcycle with some shorts and like, I just don't think it's realistic. <laughs> Give her some pants. She would be so burned up. You know what I mean? She would have like road rash if she fell. And so, and, and they totally were like, okay, you know, and it, it might sound like a small feat, but there was never any sexualization of my character. Like, and it's okay to have sexy characters. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's being, all of that stuff is totally okay. But for this character, it didn't make sense. And mm -hmm. so I just am really appreciative that I've been in groups um, and in settings where I've been allowed to kind of voice certain things um, in a way that is understood and is really making it a difference within, you know, the industry and um, and is able to empower you know all these beautiful people that I get to touch that I'm so lucky for. I love that. And speaking about empowering, you know, I created this platform to inspire, to uplift, to showcase that anything is possible if you have a dream and a vision. So I want to ask you, what are some barriers that you faced when getting into this industry, making your dream happen, and how did you get through those obstacles? You know, it's beautiful when we, when, and I, I love that that was your reasoning too. Like yeah. when you, when your purpose is that, it makes such a difference. And I think that's what allows you to get through those obstacles. Cause I feel like, you know, your reason, you know, yeah. um, I mean, one of the things I feel like obstacles that I kind of went through, I guess was trying to like understand one of the things I learned, I guess, is that there is a certain amount of humility that you have to carry in this business. Um, and there is a certain amount. And because of that humility, you will take risks and you're willing to learn. And I think that that's something that I learned that unfortunately I saw, 
you know, myself and some of my friends, as they were starting, we were, we were kind of at the same level. And then the ones that really progressed and continued in their careers were the ones that kind of understood that there is a level of humility, but then there's also a level of confidence and risk that you have to take. You have to get vulnerable and you have to take that risk um, and also get your ego out of the way. Cause your ego, if there's no room for your ego, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so that's something that had to be learned. Um, and, and I'm really glad that, that I was okay with that. And I was willing to play and I was willing to learn from everybody and everyone had something important to share that I could learn from. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, with our industry, entertainment in general, it comes with a lot of no's and rejection. But, you know, as you said, it takes a, a level of humility to keep going and to keep persisting. And uh, but it makes you more confident, right? And more resilient. So I think uh, I think there's definitely a lesson to be learned with failure. Right. So for anyone watching that's going through failure, it's OK. It's part of the process, you know? Yeah, and maybe go do some stand up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, go do some stand up and get it out of your system. Get that. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. that. I think that's that was really interesting. And Stephanie, what else are you currently working on? Oh man, this one's always such a hard one. I can never talk about anything. Uh, my industry is legit all about hush hush, keep it secret. I just say that I pretty much feel like I work for the CIA or something <laughs> because everything is secrecy. Uh, all I will say is that there are more games coming out from different things and um, there might be a show here or there and that's all I can say. <laughs> I mean, it's, it sounds very exciting. Stephanie, thank you so much for being on the show today. And uh, yeah, we hope to have you back soon. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'd love to. And so much love over to Canada as well. <laughs> Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.